The temperature in North Bay right now is minus 16 degrees. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's minus 19. In North Bay, the wind is currently blowing 5 kilometers per hour from the east. All right, guys, welcome back to Calendar. We are today gonna to be fishing on Calendar Bay, mainly because you don't have to go out far to get deep, and getting deep is the name of the game, because obviously it's fishing in shallow water. Let's go ahead and get ourselves situated. If you're wondering what I was doing at the end there, I'm looking at my back seat. I brought my battery booster because this battery's been kind of sketch, and with everything closed right now, it's kind of hard to get a new battery. A stupid. Stupid lockdown protocols causing nothing but nonsense. So let's go ahead and put this thing on the ground. Get all the straps out of the way. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I made coffee, something I've never done while ice fishing. I was actually brought coffee with me. Brought my lunch pill, four fake beer in here, and a, uh, a pack of jerky and some protein bars. Don't know where the hell I'm gonna put this. All right, good enough. Gotta get the fish finder in there. This time I'm remembering the bait. Look at me go, eh? Holy. Not really, I'm just faking it. Faking it for YouTube. Uh, I might just sit the fish finder right on top. That sounds like a battle plan. So guys, I did bring some propane tanks, a little green one. Reason being is if for some reason my idea with the big propane tank doesn't work, we're not shit out of luck. But I have a feeling that we're not gonna need propane today because it's not really that cold out. It's a little damp. One thing I remember when I sat in this thing in the house with just my body heat in there was making this thing get warm. But we'll set it up anyway just to see if it's a possibility. And to see how if it's like the clam where I only have to run it for five seconds and then I want to turn it off because it's so damn hot in there. So I'm not using the chest mount today as you noticed I got it on my head. I ran the USB cable through my jacket through my balaclava or whatever the hell this stupid thing on my head it's called. I forgot to put the yogurt on. I'm brilliant. I'm the smartest guy on the planet Earth. This thing here, I'll just kind of fire it right on here. It won't go anywhere. It's pretty heavy. All right, make sure the truck is locked. My gloves on. Stupid warm. And though the one nice thing about this having a super long cable is it's going to be easier to pull. And I can also just wrap it around my body here. Put hook the GoPro, put it around my waist and just walk out with it. Checking back every once in a while, making sure everything's still there. Oh yeah, this is a lot easier than what I was doing before with my hands behind my back. Maybe the rope is a little bit too long, but hey look, cattails, those things, apparently the shoots on those are apparently really delicious. I bought a book on uh, edible plants and it turns out my backyard is a freaking salad bowl, boys. That cow parsnip that I'm growing back there by accident, that goldenrod that I'm growing, growing back there by accident, all that shit. That's like some highly nutritious stuff. Buddy said he's probably gonna be out here to the guy who bought the clam. Said he's gonna be coming out the calendar today. to let her rip tater chips, so. Let's see if we find him out here. Maybe we'll see the old shanty. See her in action, in full glory. Him and his kid are gonna fish from it. Thing said one kid because the only reason why my buddy gave it to me was because he has two kids and two don't fit well in there. Look at that. People are driving their trucks out there. The insanity of it. I think I'll pass on that one. Anyway guys, today is gonna be a pretty long video, I'm gonna warn you now. Mainly because, oh, this guy just parked right on the freaking ice too. Wonder how thick it is here. Obviously thick enough for a full size 4x4 to go out. Okay, well the sled's catching up to me. Yeah, this is way better having the rope around my waist as the bumpers over there. So, like I said, this is gonna be a full, full length video. 
Don't know how long it's gonna be, but hopefully you have time to sit through it. We're gonna be thoroughly testing out this thing. We're gonna stay here till about six, seven. Then we're gonna go home and we're gonna cook, some, cook up some lobster tails because those are on sale. And even if we do catch fish today, lobster tails is what's for dinner. Let's keep looking back to make sure the fish finder's still on there. I don't see it going anywhere, but you never know. So the only way this won't be a long video is if something happens, this GoPro doesn't charge, doesn't accept a charge, or it breaks down. It has been giving me troubles, and because it's on my head and not on my chest, I can't tell if it's actually recording or not, so that's one of those bust out the selfie cam situations and have a look-see. Oh yeah, this is way easier with the, uh, the rope around the waist and just hauling it like a horse would. This is probably the best idea I ever had in ideas. All right, well, I'll tune back in once we're at the spot. Sure are a lot of cars out here. There's one over there, a couple trucks over there. Totally could have driven the Ford out here, but I don't know, man. It goes down. I don't have a vehicle anymore. No thanks. I really like my truck. Can't replace that. But the year being the best year of the F-150, the amount of low miles I have on it, 18,000 kilometers in four freaking years. I only got one year left to go and then it's paid off and it's freaking mine. Why the hell would I want to risk losing it ice fishing? I think we're gonna go out here a little bit further there. And we'll rip a couple holes and set up our shit. Really gotta put the runners on the sled. Holy crap. That's a big freaking bird. I wonder if that's the reason why the perch here are so tasty and not wormy. You know what guys? I think we're gonna come right over here. We're gonna drop anchor. We gotta be pretty far out. Don't know how long we've been walking for. Got out of the truck, it was 11.30. Currently it's 11.44. I say right here. This is the prime spot. Probably not, because it's not near anybody. A lot of people over there. A lot of people over there. Nobody where I am. That's the thing with ice fishing, eh? Unless you have a skidoo or something to get on the ice. When you gotta walk it, you gotta remember. You gotta walk out, you gotta walk back in. It's good exercise, don't get me wrong, but holy shit, cardio for days. That's why I don't know why I do so much cardio during the week. I can't wait for next summer though, boys. The dock that Sarah and I usually fish from, that's it right there. There's an island out here. Uh, is it here? No, back at uh, the other spot, the wall. You know what? I think we're gonna do it right here. So I'm not sure what to do. Do I dig a hole down? Because this thing has a floor, or do I just rip holes, sit this on top of the snow, hope the crash don't freeze to it. I'm just gonna start ripping holes right now. Okay guys, it turned out I just finished talking to myself for I have no idea what kind of footage I got for this camera. Uh, but uh, right now we're just set up with a Swedish pimple on a uh, with a minnow head and we're just giving her a quick little jig rip on the bottom here. See if we can entice a bite. This camera's behaving weird again. It is what it is, but I uh, should have brought the chest mount because I don't know how well this is gonna work out for me without seeing how the camera's responding. So. so I don't know how much was said and how much wasn't, but I explained how a fish finder works in flasher mode because a lot of people, if you watch fish finding or um, ice fishing videos, a lot of people have their fish finders in this mode or they're actually using an authentic fish uh, flasher. Starting to understand why people don't use the head mounts for these GoPros because uh, the chest mount, it's obviously great to be able to see what the hell's going on with your GoPro. Having this thing on my head, I have no idea. Unless I bust out my cell phone and start busting selfies, turning on the mirror and stuff and looking at it when I hit record to see if it's actually doing what she says it should be doing, but it's probably not doing that because why would it bother? But yeah, like I said, I brought some snackos and I brought some, uh, brought some beers. Well, fake beers. I wasn't gonna buy them. I uh, only reason why I went to a um, independent yesterday was to get the lot. I checked on my phone before I left Circle Lake to see if it was independent because I had my phone on me and Rebe has the information. So I was like, well, maybe it's independent. Maybe it's friggin' Metro or maybe it was Sobeys because I checked all three of those yesterday <clears throat> before the ice fishing while I was working. And that's when I noticed that uh, there was a big deal. I was super interested, so even if we catch something here, we're having lobster tonight. I gotta figure out how to cook it. Probably gonna instant pot it. A lot of people seem to steam it, so I've been steaming my fish all week and that turned out pretty good. So we'll just blast her in the instant pot with some buttery water. <sighs> Give it some flavor, throw some garlic in there and stuff, and then we'll dip it in garlic butter and can't see it being bad. It's not gonna be like red lobster quality because they actually know what they're doing and I'm an idiot. But 
it'll be good. It'll be all right. Even if we catch fish. If we catch fish, well, sweet. You know, here I am, I'm at home, and I'm using that little shitty white cutting board to cut with. And I completely forgot my counter has a massive wooden cutting board built into it that I just never remember that I have. Come on, Junior. Just bite it. I see a little little notch there coming off the bottom. Maybe I should put this in the other traditional mode. <coughs> God, I'm dying. Hergy <coughs> Oh, man. So right now it's picking something up at 20 feet. So we'll come up there and see if we can entice that little bastard. Whatever it is, it's surfacing. Please don't be a mud puppy. People have been saying that mud puppies have been coming out of their ice fishing holes and saying hi while they're fishing. Like, like a mud puppy will just come up and be like, sup, and then frig off. Unless I just lost my minnow head. That could also be my minnow head surfacing. But it could very well be a mud puppy. Nope, minnow head's still there. So let's go ahead and get that back down. God, that number four Swedish pimple just <laughs> sinks like a rock. Oh my goodness. You release it and it's just a straight dive down. Eh? It just gets down there like yesterday. Just friggin' hoovers down to the bottom looking for them fish. Yeah, this thing's pretty badass, I do have to admit. Like, because now I know what I can't bring and can't use in here, uh, basically, this lowers the amount of gear I need to carry with me, which means lowers the weight that I need to carry with me. And theoretically, I could put like a rod in here. Like if I had a big bucket, like the HT bucket, for instance, if that ever comes on sale, I'm totally gonna pick that up. But, um, oh, there's something there. I had something dicking with my shit. This feels lighter than I, I must have lost my minnow head. I know I was thinking about putting the tip up out, but honestly, these windows are so freaking so juiced up for me sitting in here that I can't see shit out of them. So if I've set up my tip up, I won't be able to tell if it's lit or not. Ah, uh, but one thing I am craving really big time bad. Is that going to stay? Cool. Guys, we have a rod holder. Nice. Built in and everything. One thing I am craving is a quick shot of coffee. So I'm just going to move my gloves over to this side of the chair. Luckily they're not sitting in snow either because we got this nice tarp underneath us, so that's pretty sweet. That's something else I was wondering. Maybe you guys can answer this. Would a tarp insulate the uh, Fraybill floor? Would that work? See, holy shit, why is it so tight? There we go. The problem with the Fraybill is it's got nice walls, it's got a nice ceiling, but it's got no floor, right? That's the intention for it. So, lacking all that shit, your feet get cold instantly. Oh man, I just dripped on myself. Lovely. Probably dripped on the shanty too. My buddy's definitely gonna make me make me buy it now. It smells like coffee. God, that dark uh, kicking horse coffee is just so friggin' delicious. Uh, this is kicking horse. It's either three sisters or kick ass. I can't remember. All I know is I bought one, one of each bag. I like Three Sisters a lot because it's literally a mix of dark, medium, and light roast. But I really like Kick-Ass because it's just a light roast that annihilates you. There's something down there. I need to get down there a little bit further. Well, I got an email back from Buddy about the kayaks. I don't know if I told you guys yet. Um, I don't know why I pluralized it either, but I did, so that's a thing. So I asked him about the, um, the Volador, because I've been doing a lot of YouTube research on it. Out of for kayaks under a thousand dollars and in the u.s the same kayak goes for like 400 bucks which you know that's pretty awesome but in canada we don't have that luxury so what he does is he basically he doesn't like the uh, paddle that comes with it he says it's a piece of shit and a lot of the times when you buy a new kayak that comes with a paddle the paddle is a piece of shit which is why pelican i don't believe sell them with a paddle they make you buy the paddle separately because they don't want to give you a piece of shit and not have that have a bad review on their end but uh what he does is he ends up upgrading the paddle and after everything's all said and done taxes in you're looking at like 700 bucks which is pretty damn good for a fully functional fishing kayak sit on top with a comfortable seat uh two rod holders plus two behind the seat plus two dry storages uh, plus a uh, cargo net in the back for storing stuff with a 350 pound capacity like that's Pretty damn good for a fishing kayak because some of the ones I priced out like the pelicans and the uh, There's other brands that I looked at too <coughs> were well over twelve thirteen hundred dollars And I was like holy shit like if I'm gonna go that far in I might as well just buy a boat There's some coffee down the hole bait the hole attract the bass you guys know that's valid eh? bass love coffee it's 
That's why there's coffee flavoring for your baits that you can ooze on it and attract the bass. Because bass love coffee. I was not aware. But now I know, and knowing's half the battle. Oh, we got something coming off the floor. We got something coming off the floor, boys. Oh, we had something coming off the floor. So I cocked that over. Oh, he's coming back up. Come on. You want it. I have no idea what the heck just happened on the screen. But on the same note, I have no idea what the hell is going on with this camera. I think what it is is the battery pack that I'm using. It's not my traditional battery pack. And I think for some reason it can send and receive data, like the data lines are hooked up to something. Because when you plug the camera in and you turn it on, rather than going into record mode right away, it goes into the I'm transferring data from the hard drive mode. There is a guy on the bottom there I'm trying to entice a bite. Don't bite, you little jerk. You see you down there, you're stirring up the friggin' dirt and you're catapulting shit all the way up to the sky. Take interest. Even if you're a sucker, I don't care. Unless you're a mud puppy, because that's pretty disgusting. I'm not eating a mud puppy, guys. I'll eat fish, but I do not classify a mud puppy as a fish. <laughs> they look like little, uh, little salamanders, like they're so weird. Something's down there just stirring up the friggin' bottom. I can see a guy coming off the bottom. If he doesn't bite, I'm dropping this friggin' uh, this uh, Swedish pimple. Anyway, I'm gonna switch off the Swedish pimple for something a little bit more not lame. Uh, I'm just gonna go with a jig, because jigs seem to work. Got him! Got him! Got him, boys! Still got him. Don't tell me he let go. No, he's still there. He oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of that perch. <laughs> he's a kegger. Get this out of your mouth. Yeah, he's coming home with me. First fish of the day, boys. <laughs> Dirty little perch. I really don't feel like hooking myself. This guy probably didn't either, but uh, shit happens. All right, thanks for playing, Junior. Pick you up after. <laughs> First fish of the day. Dirty little perch. That makes me happy. The, uh, I don't know how big he is, but that's exactly what I want is a bunch of those guys. Well, it's official. Should uh, get a shot of Junior here on my Instagram feed. Let's get this thing closed up. Try and catch more fishies. Yay, fishies. Little jerk face spying me too, but well, I guess it's I guess we're even because I ripped his face off and he's fine me. All right, so those hooks are hella sharp. You'll make an interesting snack. So it's official. Perch like Swedish pimples. Let's see if we can get a couple more of those. I don't think I really want this thing. And then I give it back and it's covered in like perch guts. And All right, minnow head number three. First one, I kind of lost it. Fell off. I was using one of the old shitty fish. The uh, frozen, stuck in the back of my truck, thawed out. 1400 times. Hey, there's one now. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys can see that guy right there. God, I hope my GoPro is recording. Anyway, let's get this back down there because there's definitely going to be more fish. Where there's one, there's usually others. That's the only thing I'm missing about having the um, the heater in here. Oh, I'm like, what the hell is that noise? It's freaking Junior outside the tent just giving her, letting her rip tater chip, eh? All right. God, I hope this GoPro is recording. Let me check it real quick. Oh, yeah, we're good. Yeah, never gonna use the head mount for this kind of operation again. God, does that ever not work out well? Probably gives you guys an interesting point of view, but as far as, uh, as knowing if the GoPro is recording or not, it's a real pain in the dick. I guess it'd be different if I had my other battery pack, because it's strictly just a battery pack. Man, I'm happy I caught a fish today. The, the, the day's young, guys. It's like it's only 1246. How much battery life does this thing have? It's turning red. Oh, I got 16% battery life. I'm about to kill my friggin' Fitbit, guys. I got the email this morning telling me my battery was low, but I ignored it because I'm stupid. And I was excited to come out here and play fishing. And of course I caught a fish, because guess what I left at home? The bucket. That's right. I'll just fire Junior into the sleigh there and drag him home like I did with the last Junior that I brought home. A couple more of those, man, and uh, yeah, we'll have perch and lobster for dinner. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty damn awesome to me. Bringing steamed perch and lobster for dinner? Hell yeah. Covered in my my spices and some butter and throw them all in the air fryer and steam them up. Take it easy out there, Francis. Holy crap, he's just going like 
Don't rip this tarp, it's not paid for. I'm trying to get your buddy there, just chill. Yeah, I was watching uh, Coke Machine last night. He was doing another after hours bite. And uh, I thought about hooking you guys up and dangling you, but I wasn't sure exactly where I put my phone. I guess I could wrap it around that top bar up here and just send it across and that would work. And then I was gonna do a live stream, but uh, cause like I said, I had 20 gigs of data. Holy, Francis, calm down. You're not going back down the hole, bud. Like bouncing off the tarp, he's gonna rip my tent with a stupid dorsal fin. And then I'm gonna have to tell my buddy, yeah, here's your hundred bucks. Well, the first fish out of the not ours yet shanty was a dirty little perch. You know, it's funny, like if I had a rod, the same company who makes this here, HT, they make a, a bucket with a, um, it comes with a rod and a tip up, but they want a <clears throat> hundred bucks for a bucket. Like, it's so stupid. And it literally comes on sale for like 50 bucks. At 50 bucks, you get a, a medium heavy rod with a nine pound uh, uh, line or eight pound line, something like that. Anyway, it's, it's high poundage line. Seriously, bud? <laughs> Uh, you get uh, some jig heads, they're jig heads, they're okay. And you get uh, some bobbers, because I didn't realize people use bobbers for ice fishing. I figured if you're holding your rod, you're going to feel a fish bite. You're going to react, and you're going to catch the guy. That's the way it goes. And the bucket you can sit on. Well, I don't need the bucket to sit on in here, because that's fine. But I put this thing on my back, grab the bucket in one hand, grab my auger in the other and just walk out on the ice and I'm good to go I can see him underneath here Reagan Jr. out there is flipping out of course I caught a fish right of course like no freaking bucket to put him in of course I caught a fish I just sent Sarah a picture of the perch now she thinks she's probably now she probably thinks she's bad luck but she keeps forgetting that while we were in calendar or calendar in uh, Corbeil and we were fishing at Nosbonzing I totally caught a bass so she needs to catch a freaking fish through the ice yet and see what that feels like because honestly guys i've caught perch in the summer i've caught them in the winter and in the winter it's like you get them and you're like oh did it let go but it didn't let go it's it's just it gives up he this guy's not giving up right now like he's really really tooting his horn out there he's really giving her <laughs> but i don't know if you saw the strat that i used uh, when I saw the fish come up and uh, go for the line, I started slowly taking it away, which made him go, Oh, you think you're going to run, eh? And then he just like, Hom! He hoovered back the minnow, but uh, he also hoovered back the treble hook. Was that, that was my first fish on the pimple. I've never caught a fish on the pimple before. My friend Maxine is the one who told me about these Swedish pimples. She said they are king in this lake. Um, the color that she told me to get, I couldn't find, so... I just grabbed whatever color I could see that was close. Being colorblind, it doesn't really help much. I guess theoretically I could do the double dangle. I could fire my other line, because I do have my other rod, and I could do the double, one here, one here. If I do catch a fish out of one hole, then what the frig do I do with the other rod? <laughs> I was thinking, um, I was watching, uh, was it Maverick? One of them anyway. They were doing uh, ice fishing, camping overnight, and they had this this uh, reel that had bells in it. And when a fish bites on, it just it, it cranks like it lets off line, and it let, makes a noise. And I was thinking about how easy that would be to build because you would just like if you have an old spool of line, like a small spool of line, and a piece of wood with a clamp. I could clamp it to the bar attach a bell to the spool and just dangle it down there and just bring it down watch the fish finder and make sure I get it see somebody just was just interested and I didn't react shit there's another perch down there boys if I um, did that then we would totally there he's coming up he's coming up he's coming up he's coming up no he's going after the other thing no oh, he went right by it what the hell is that is that my middle head Did my middle head fall off again See, this is the only problem without the heater is I'm getting ice build up on my line again. That's why I really miss the heater. Oh, Junior out there, he's just freaking giving her. 
not really happy about his current situation. He feels bad about dining at Chase Givens. Poor little feller. Doesn't matter. He's going in the friggin' Instant Pot. Doesn't matter. He's going in the Instant Pot. I wonder why I'm hearing water. Like, the walls are soaked. Look at that. It's from the humidity. Like, my body's probably throwing off, like, 300 BTUs. And also, guys, if this is the only perch we get, I saw another way how to cook perch that's uh, a little different. It's more of a survivalist way, so you get most meat with less waste. And I figure we can always give that a try, too. It's kind of like how you cook a perch, a uh, perch, a trout, where you basically waste nothing, except for with, like, the guts. You, you don't hang on to the guts. You could check out the belly to see what they're eating if you're you know trying to match the hatch or whatever the term is but gotta make sure that jeremiah out there doesn't freaking make his way underneath the tarp and back into the hole and get back to freedom kind of looking forward to eating his ass that sounded really bad i apologize oh man the sun's out you can see it if it wasn't so freaking wet in the windows so that's where uh all these these shanties are, are fail boats but like I say, I don't have a heater in here right now, and it's not too bad. Oh, there's a guy down there. I just saw him come off the bottom. Come on, Junior. Jimothy needs a buddy. I also forgot my measuring tape, which means if I do catch a walleye, I have no way to confirm or deny its size. This thing is going to go get the tripod, but then I notice this great big friggin' group of ball of bait fish, and look at this. So I was like, man, something's moving in, so I'm just gonna stay in, stay in here for a minute. I was gonna get the tripod and set up this phone and maybe try an ice fishing live stream. But I don't know how I could do it where I could show you guys the fish finder and stuff. I don't know, maybe I should just avoid the whole live streaming for now. That'd be more of a thing to do with the big fray bill. Maybe we'll try that there next weekend, the live streaming. I hope we can get more than just one fish today though, that'd be nice. Hopefully we can get something like, I'd like to get a Cisco. Um, they're also known as, as herrings. Close this here because there's a lot of light coming in from the sun and I thought maybe it might help, but you know, I'll balance out the light. I wonder if anybody else having any luck out there. I also opened up my jacket because frig sakes, it's no heat in here, but as long as you keep your feet on these, uh, on here, it makes a huge difference, which this, that's the main, problem that Sarah and I both have is when we're in the fray bill, our feet freeze and it doesn't matter how much heat you have on you your feet freeze and it's obviously because of the amount of snow on the ground that you're stepping on just cocks over the program so man there's like a huge friggin I don't know what the hell that is up there a school of fish or something I don't know or somebody rocked piss in the water and it's making its way past my hole that's always a possibility I do have to say though, um, that Rapala did a friggin' quick job with this. I, I, I don't even know how deep that hole is, but uh, hand cranking that hole didn't take that long, that's for sure. I was chatting with a buddy. Uh, he's gone fishing today on Talon Lake. Uh, apparently there's good walleye to be caught there if you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, unlike this lake, like this lake here, the stipulations for walleye are different. Everywhere else, like Nosbonsang and Talon and Anywhere else in zone 11, the walleye have to be, I think it's under 17 inches. I have to look up the regs to be certain. But on this lake here, and the only reason why I know this lake so much better than the actual every other lake ever, is that this lake here, they got to be 18.1 inches or higher in order to be a keeper. Which is why I usually don't bother caring about walleye. I love catching them. Like the, the my logo is the Skivens. It's based off of a walleye, their little toothy face and their puffed up angry look like they always look so pissed off when you pull them out of the water like it looks like you just woke them up from a bad from like from a good dream and they want to fight like they're just great looking fish you know i love bass because they're so dopey looking but walleye are just freaking awesome and they're tasty now I'm not saying they're the king of the ocean or the king of the freaking lakes or anything obviously a pike and a muskie the mi muskies are the apex predator that's a that's a hard given. I don't know what the heck that is on my outer scan, but holy crap, is that ever a big signature? Might be a might be a pike. I'm trying to see if I can get it to uh, 
to maybe chase me down, but that's a hard no. That's another thing about this shanty right now. These walls are friggin' hot. Like This side here is wet, this side here is dry. The sun's hitting this side over here, and you can feel the heat just radiating off the sidewall. It's insanely awesome. Like, I almost want to, I'm going to close this up because that light coming in is really bright. Okay, I don't know if that was somebody having a friggin' base cannon out there, or if that was the ice cracking. And guys, I'm not worried about the ice cracking in half or anything. We're literally sitting on 12, 12 inches of ice, like a good foot of ice, even more than that. Like, I got to remember to bring a measuring tape with me. But yeah, going back to Talon, Talon Lake, like if you catch a 14 inch, 15 inch uh, walleye, you can keep it. And that's why my buddy likes fishing there is because he'll catch a couple of walleye and you can catch four. Like this lake here, I have a sports license. I can keep two walleye that are over 18 inches. I think Struck has finally caught his first keeper walleye of 2021. Um, I think he said it was 18.5. I could be wrong on that. Uh, I caught two last year, but one of them wasn't out of this lake. Um, it was actually out of um, a, a river, so it fell into the zone 11 rules. So as long as it was under 17 inches, 17.5, I think. It, I gotta, you know what? Let me, let me look it up because I'm probably talking shit right now. And anybody in this zone who's watching this is probably like, dude, learn your regs. So I should probably learn my regs. So let's go up here. Zone. <laughs> All right. So, do they have them from Zone? You know what? Do we have Zone Eleven fishing rags for 2021? That'll work. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I was dickish. Drives right by the friggin' thing and then gooses it. Like what an arsehole. All right. Um, uh, fishing rules. Um. All right. So. For oh, catfish are open all year. I can keep twelve. <laughs> what the frig? What, what the frig would I do with twelve? I can keep thirty crappies. I don't even know where to find those. Um, lake trout. They're not open yet, so we can't play with them. I don't know what a white fish is, but that's okay. I can keep uh, six bass or two with a conservative license. I can keep one musky, but it's got to be greater than 122 centimeters. Uh, Northern Pike. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so Pike got some serious friggin' specifications onto them. Uh, for Pike, see, uh, from January 1st to the Sunday, March, and 3rd, Saturday, and May to December 3rd. So this is between... Um, Third Sunday in March and the uh, third Saturday in May, you can't touch pike. So they're off limits. Hmm, that's something that's coming over. Um, but anyway, the um, sports fishing license, uh, you can keep six pike. Like, that's a lot of meat, man. I, I watched a couple of these survival videos where they go pike hunting because of how much meat you can get off of them. That's a lot of meat on pike, so. Uh, so you can keep. No, uh, not more than two greater than 61 centimeters, so that's two feet. Uh, of which, not one, um, not more than one can be greater than 86 centimeters. That's 86 centimeters. That's a a pike that big. You wouldn't want to keep. Like that's just a tank. Splaker. That's what I really want to catch. Um, sports license. You can keep five. Sunfish, you can keep 50, because you probably need that much just to feed a family of two. Uh, walleye and sauger, here we go. So from January 1st to the Sunday March, um, and same deal with uh, your your pike. Um, so the third Saturday in March, uh, it stops until May. Or wait, third Sunday in March until the third Saturday in May. Anyway. So sports, I can keep four. Conservation, I can keep two. However, uh, none between 43 and 60 centimeters and not more than one greater than 60 centimeters. The problem is, is it's all in freaking metric. 
Uh, Perch, you can keep 50, so I can get 49 more if they ever want to show up and bite. Uh, Brook Trout, who cares about Brookies? I want to find the actual water body exceptions, because that's what's, that's what's, see Lake Nipissing right here. It's a fish sanctuary, so no fishing from March 16th. So the day after my birthday to pretty much the weekend after death, <laughs> there's no fishing in this lake. Um, lake Nipissing Wassie, same situation. Uh, there it is. So uh, closed to all species March 16th to uh, the third Saturday in May, and then December 1st to December 31st. Uh, so in December it shuts down, which is kind of depressing because, well, the lake's not frozen, so what the frig are you going to do, right? Uh, muskies open Saturday, June to November. Northern Pike, there's their deals there. Walleye, Yellow Perch opens from January 1st to March 15th, so it closes on my birthday. I don't even know what my birthday is this year, so uh, if it is on a weekend, I'll be out here dangling for my birthday. Maybe we'll make a cake and bring it out. Uh, walleye, there it is. Only two and none less than 46 centimeters. And I know that's 18.1 inches. So there you go. It's good to have these regs on board so you know what you're doing. But the problem is, is if you don't have a measuring tape, you have no way to friggin' know if you can <laughs> Cause you look at it and you'll be like, man, that's sweet. Look at that, a freaking pike or a, a walleye. It looks like a good eater, and it is probably a good eater, but it's not regulation, and if you keep it, well, the fine ain't worth it. It's just, it's just not, so. And I know some people do. Some people definitely keep the fish, and oh, they'll never catch me, and the problem is, is when they do catch you, then what? They could revoke your license, revoke your ability to ever get a fishing license again. It's not worth it. Anyway, guys, I think I'm uh, gonna switch this Swedish pimple in for... Actually, it feels really light, so I'm wondering if my minnow head fell off again. Yep, yep, that's exactly what happened. All right, I'm gonna switch this thing up for um, a jig and a minnow because that seems like a strat that usually works pretty well. All right, I'll chime back in later. I'm not gonna lie, I'm honestly gonna be impressed if this actually works. Um, also, guys, I took your advice and I put a, um, yesterday you saw me put a piece of, uh, tackle on, uh, a swivel on the other rod. And I just put one on this one, too. <coughs> oh, man, I got dry throat. What if I could just dead stick this jerk while I, uh, grab another cup? Yeah, I'll grab a beer. Bring it. Yeah, I had some people walk by there and they're checking out the shanty going, wow, that's really cute. Freak off, it's not cute, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll grab a beer and some jerky here. Why not? Let's have some jerky after handling all those minnow guts. See, I was gonna buy some clickboard from Walmart. I don't know if it's called clickboard or not, but it's that, you know, that sponge flooring that clicks together. Because they had some for like 20 bucks. And, you know, it was like six pieces. That would have been awesome in the uh, shelter, but then I realized I got a couple pieces at home. And it was just for us to put our feet on, and we sit there and we fish, and we're fine. It's just to insulate your feet from the snow, so that the cold doesn't transfer. That's all we need. Oh god, that's good. <laughs> I do end up buying this thing. Remind me to build a cup holder in it. Tell me I didn't just friggin' lose my minnow. No, it's still there. Back down you go. <clears throat> Going to entice a bite, little guy. Do it. Do what you're meant to do, you frozen little idiot. Ugh. All right, well, this strap might not work. We might end up ripping this torso off and chucking it, but uh, I'm gonna try this for a bit and see if we can entice a bite. Maybe we can get a Walter on. Even though you can't keep them, if you can catch one, sure. It's it's another fish that you get to look at and go, hey buddy, what's going on? Goodbye. I got some movement down there, boys. See, one of the problems I'm having here is my hole keeps freezing up. And with the Swedish pimple, it wasn't a problem because the, uh, it's also getting around the edges here. The line gets stuck and then 
jigging it becomes a problem. You pull up and <laughs> it doesn't drop back down. When you have the heater, you don't have that problem because the atmosphere is nice and warm and the holes don't freeze up. Good. You're not running the heater. Oh, well, welcome to, uh, like this hole here over here is already frozen up. Like my transducer is sitting in a block of ice right now. It's funny because you look at this hole over here and it's like clear. You can see straight through it. Look at that hole there and it's just all slush. I'm going to try and clear some of that out. Are oh, you going to come rip around my little shanty again? Jerks. Don't worry about hanging that in there. And they give you the stupidest little angle for a scoop, eh? Like, you, you, they give you nowhere to hook it. Like, they, I wish they would have came around a bit higher and then I could have just hung it from the bar or hung it from this, this pad and, instead of putting it in there. Or whatever. Under the seat you go. Go hang out with the minnows. Well, I haven't heard anything from Jimothy out there in a while, so I'm pretty sure he's nice and dead. Maybe my presentation's too big. He's a big minnow. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't heard anything from Jimothy out there in a while. He's probably he's probably dead. Yeah, if I had something I could like attach to this post here, attach to that post there, and just let it dangle in the water, and even if I let it dangle in this hole here while I jig over here, and something bites, just pull the deucer out and hand bomb the jerk face up, and maybe to bite you, keep him, and if he's a dick, you send him back. Well, that's one way to keep your beer nice and cold. Don't worry guys, it's de-alkalized. What kind of pisses me off is all these new microbreweries are showing up everywhere. And all of them don't make de-alkalized beer. Like I get it, there's not much of a market for de-alkalized beer. A lot of people frown on it. They think it's stupid. It's like, why drink it? It ain't gonna get you shit-faced to make you beat up your wife. Why drink it, right? But then there's people like me who quit drinking because getting shit-faced was stupid and made you do dumb things but you still enjoy the taste of beer now and then and you kind of want it without having to get drunk and fall down the stairs and make a fool out of yourself <coughs> enter dealkalized beer protein bar protein bar Holy crap, things are practically frozen. Sweet. These are also on sale. Three of them for like five bucks. Or three packs, I should say, for five bucks. Well, oh, that's not too bad. gonna say you couldn't put them in your kids lunch but I guess now you can because every, everybody's schooling from home so I think the best part about this setup yeah it's small there's not a lot of room in here and shit and that's a bit of a problem but the setup and tear down is so quick that if we decided that this place wasn't the juice and we wanted to pack up and move. Literally, pull, pull, down it goes, on the sleigh, drag, rip two more holes, pull, pull, up it goes, set fish finder, have a plop, you know? I'm just happy to not be in the house and not doing tech support. Not doing IT shit. Away from the computers. You know, I know some of you out there who watch we started watching because I was all about the computer life and video games and technology and all that. But let me tell you, when you make that your job <clears throat> of doing tech stuff all freaking day, the last thing you want to do on the weekend is more freaking tech stuff. Which is why, like, I used to get upset after a week of work. <laughs> My parents would be like, oh, can you come over and help us set up the iPad and fix my computer and this and that and that and this and it's like holy shit like I just finished doing all that and you know I go there and I would do it but I'd be pretty irate the whole time and it's because literally I just spent five days talking to dummies fixing their computers the weekend I just want to turn that part of my brain off and honestly there's nothing farther away from technology doing what I'm doing right now 
I say that while I'm staring at a monitor <laughs> showing me what's going on in the water. <laughs> but like honestly, there's, for what I do in a week, fishing is the best getaway. This summer camping is going to be off the hook. If I could, I would be doing the camping in my Freyville on the ice, but they basically banned it because of COVID lockdown. So that will not be happening this year for sure. Watched a couple videos of people doing it. it looked pretty fun. You know, I got my cot. I got a couple of those mats. I could set up a tip up or something overnight and when the fish bite. Check to see what they are. If they're keepers or not. And they send them back. Because they're never keepers out of this lake. It's like it's like the lottery. This lake, you know. You catch perch, cool, keep them. If you catch a walleye, it's like a one in a million chance you're gonna get a keeper walleye. But to be fair, I like this kind of gambling versus going to like a casino or lottery or anything like that. Cause at least this, like I said, gets me out of the house. Especially during these freaking times, eh? Like holy crap. I'm not sure where the heck I'm gonna put my flashlight. Huh. I never even thought about that. Fun times. Still got plenty of time before we're gonna need that though. At least another three hours. You know what the best part about ice fishing is though guys? Like it doesn't look like I'm doing much right now, right? But let me tell you, tonight I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be in bed by nine. I'm gonna be out like a light. Ice fishing drains you and it's so awesome. I get such good night sleeps after days like this. Just being out here, giving her a dangle, potentially catching a fish. <laughs> I thought it was carbon monoxide poisoning from, from burning that buddy heater, but no, like I'm getting tired just sitting here right now. Not because I'm bored, it's because I'm just getting tired. Can't reach my beer, this is bad. I'll call the police. Okay, I'm thinking my presentation with this minnow body is no good. Put a fresh one on. Maybe I got a small one in there I can use. Just bounced him off the side of the hole. I got him, he's pretty big, like. He ain't no junior mint. <coughs> oh, gross. Chum the waters. Grab a fresh guy. Where did I put those? All right, do we have a little guy in here? There's my minnow making his way downtown. I think I'm gonna run just the head. A smaller presentation seems to get the best reaction. And using just the head always seems to work. I don't know why. Anybody out there knows why, just the head. Tell me without it making it sound disgusting. Of course, you're probably gonna take that in away. That YouTube demonetizes videos for. Alright, well that's disgusting. Let's drop friggin' headless horseman down there. There you go. Let's go fly be free. There he shows up. So there's reports that the MNR were out on deep water. Let's see if they uh, show up today. Never know. They're always out. I got my license actually. It's in the side of the fish finder. I was gonna put it like right here. You see the stitching on the outside of the door. There's a, a holder. I was gonna put my license in there but I figure I always bring the fish finder with me. Having it on the side of the fish finder is fine. I keep getting stuck on the side of the hole. If you're wondering what that second line is, that's the other minnow. And there's that. Bunch of guts right here that need to go down. The joys of fishing. So let's sit and wake it. Okay, that's weird. Now this camera's working like it normally does. I really don't get this thing. Anyway, I had something approach there a while ago, so I turned on the GoPro just in case. And and it decided not to. It wasn't interested. I'm thinking about switching to a spoon or something else. Uh, like I said, I took your advice. I put a swivel on it with a quick connect. <coughs> so changing baits is not a big deal. It's pretty easy. I was thinking about going to a rip and wrap because those usually uh, draw fish in because they swim around aggressively and disturb the water column pretty good. The only dilemma is, is ice hole keeps freezing up which is kind of a problem. I was debating on grabbing the heater and just putting one of the little one pound bombs in it and then trying to find a way to put it in here. But the ideal spot, there's a bar on the way. I was thinking about modifying that milk crate and putting a piece of wood on both ends so that it would sit above that bar and I could chuck the fish finder in the bottom of the heater on top and that would do it. Worst case, if I have to move this whole shanty ahead a bit, then so be it. Mind you, having the holes that much closer to me is not going to be ideal. I'm trying to figure it out. Because, like, the little buddy heater would have been ideal for this type of operation. That big buddy is a little bit too big. 
sunny out. This wall's super wet. We're freezing up down here. This wall here is super dry and hot as hell. Roof is wet. Yeah, you can see some condensation up here. So yeah, it's no different than when I used the clam. The clam would do the same thing. She'd sweat even with no heater. See, it's dripping. <laughs> it's, uh, the walls are dripping. Not like it's cold in here though. That's what's weird. It's it's actually pretty comfortable temperature. I don't even know what the temperature outside is right now. Last I checked was minus 16. But between the ice holes freezing up, the line building up ice. It's just a pain in the pain in the arsehole. It's a pain in the ice hole, eh? We'll figure something out. I'm still using my brain to think while I dangle my tickle stick here and try and catch some more fish. I'm telling you, perch with the lobster. Can't tell me that doesn't sound delicious. Catch a couple more of those guys. We'll have one hell of a friggin' feast tonight. You know my rule is, is I can only catch one fish per video, so maybe I should start a new video. <laughs> uh, okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up and we're going to switch it over to a ripping wrap. That seems like the strat that worked last time. When one thing doesn't work, guys, like if this, the jig and the, the minnow head worked awesome last time, doesn't mean it's going to work every time. That's one thing with fishing is just because a strat worked once doesn't mean it's always going to work. You gotta switch it up. The fish want something different, give them something different. So, all right, well, I'll tune back in if anything cool happens. Oh, I decided to step outside to see how bad it is out here, and it's it's actually not too bad at all. So, fishy, fishy. He's just kind of kicking it right here, right up against the ice hut. See a frozen popsicle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a frozen popsicle. Poor guy. We'll uh, just chuck him in there for now. I just wanted to see how bad it was out here. And with the wind, it kind of sucks, but it'd be nice to get that heater in there. I just don't know how the hell I would do it. Let's uh, try and fang dangle that right now. Let's grab you and see what we can do make shit work. Oop, I just trash home here, Ken. Mm -hmm. you destroying everything. See, the problem is, is I can run the hose out the door, put the propane tank right out the door, but I can't put it there. Could. There's nowhere I can put it. We're on a small propane bottle. I'm still frigged. So what I was thinking was if I had if I modify the milk crate and put like one inch piece of wood on it just to lift it off the ground and then put it behind there, I can move the tent forward. Well, not right now, because she's frozen to the ground. That's going to be fun. But I can move the tent forward, and she'll be good. Only other idea I have is if I put the heater right there, just temporarily, run it for a bit to generate some heat, and then shut it off. And just keep doing that. Now, that heater's way too big for this setup, that's for sure. This is going to be one of those things that when I use it, I'll be taking minimal gear. You figure it out. You figure it out as you go. That's all you can really do, right? Sunlight in. Oh, we got something coming off the bottom. Let's see if we can catch it. See, that's driving me nuts. Freaking line keeps freezing to the side of the wall. There's something down there on the bottom. See that ice hole freezing line bullshit? That happened in the clam a lot before I got the heater. And then when I got the heater, everything was good. Guys, I made a perch sickle. <laughs> that poor fish is solid. Oh my god. I just realized that sun is coming right in here beaming the camera too. Probably doesn't help with the video. Thing is, I just didn't see no man that fish. You watch, I'll bring him home, he'll thaw out in the sink and he'll start flippy flapping. <laughs> I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Well, at least tomorrow I know what we don't need to bring. We don't need to bring the heater. 
Literally all we need is the shit that's in here. Everything else is either the auger and the shovel, that's it. Everything else is just extra. Didn't even bring the chairs this time because this thing has a built-in chair, so. I'm gonna sleep hard tonight. I was thinking about live streaming a video game, but number one, I don't know what the hell to live stream, and number B or whatever. I'm freaking tired. I also need to check on my trap. What trap, you ask? Oh, that's for another video. But don't worry, guys. We're not doing anything illegal. Everything we're doing is perfectly legal. Solo man, run and gun. This is a great little habitat. That's my new song, you like it? It's gonna be on Spotify. Probably not. Uh, this is the reason why I wanted to get out here early today. Mainly because everybody I talked to said that calendar is good for a day bite. If you, get, you can get out here between 9 and noon, you can usually catch a lot of fish. But then in the afternoon, they pretty much shut off. And then from 5 till 6, they pick up again. We'll see how this plays out. Maybe we'll start packing up. I gotta figure out how the hell I'm gonna break this thing free of the ice. <laughs> because, guys, she welded herself to the ice. I'm starting to think that maybe digging down was a bad idea. Uh, maybe clearing out the ice holes. That should have been just all I did. Well, I guess you can say I got my fish in the freezer, so he's nice and fresh. Holy crap, guys, he is still. <laughs> you saw I grabbed him by the tail. He didn't flex. <laughs> oh, and Sino Man to perch. We'll give her a dangle till about 5.30ish and then we'll tear down. Because uh, that Coke machine guy I watch, he comes out usually at around 4.30. I think he gets off work at 4.30 and then uh, comes out at around 4.40. He usually starts his live streams 4.45. Comes out, sets up his ice shack. He has an actual, like a physical structure on the lake for the wood stove and all that fun stuff. So he comes out, he sets up his shit. He usually dangles till about 5.45, 6 and then shuts her down. Like yesterday's live stream was only an hour and a half. Caught a couple perch, caught a couple dink perch, and uh, caught a couple of wallies too. But no keepers, no keepers, all senders. It's kind of neat though, since I started doing the fishing thing in North Bay, and I joined a couple with a couple of uh, the fishing farms. I'm finding a lot of YouTube fishermen from North Bay. So if it wasn't for this stupid COVID, I'd reach out and be like, hey, do you want to do a collab video this summer? Then we can do a collab video and maybe some of you guys can go watch them and some of their guys can come and watch me and we can help each other grow and become better on the YouTubes. And I just realized my back was my back was freezing to the wall of the shelter. <laughs> it's, it's, this is all ice. This is literally all ice. Look at that. That's all, all condensation for me, just being in here, expelling my thermals. That sounds dirty, I know. I, that's why I said it like that. But no, I think it'd be kind of cool to uh, collab with some of these fishing YouTubers from North Bay. You know, the the one guy that I, I started watching, uh, Mantra Fishing, He um, he's like me. He just literally started ice fishing this year. He never ice fished before in his life and decided this year would be the year. And his buddy, the Rod Father, great name. Probably one of the best fishing names I ever heard of, the Rod Father. He's also from North Bay. Uh, he's been fishing for a while. He knows his shit. Oh, Mantra just dropped a video on like the top lures for Lake Nipissing. And I don't know why he left out the Swedish Pimple because everybody I talk to says that the Swedish Pimple is their go-to, their primary. The only thing they won't do is if they know there's pike nearby, they won't bother Swedish Pimple. Or if they do, they'll put a still leader on because they know the, the freaking pike will just come along and swipe that thing and take it with them. Like right now, there is a pike in this lake with about $60 worth of Swedish pimples in its face and they all belong to Struckus. It might have more. It probably looks like some straight up friggin' gangster all metal in its head. Maybe that's what the look it's going for, I don't know. But if anybody ever catches that fish, they'll not only have a meal, but they'll have a tackle box. So, that's pretty cool. One of the ideas I thought about for heat in here, I don't know why, but it's been in this running, this running thing. Um, Maverick did it first. He used tea candles in his truck to heat up his truck while sleeping in it. And he said it was stupid warm. And then Steve Walls, uh, Steve Wallace, 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 camping with Steve, he, um, he basically did a tent inside of a tent. So he basically took a fishing hut like mine, put that up, and then put up a camping tent inside of the fishing hut. And he camped in that. And he heated it with tea candles. 
Mav said it worked. Steve said it didn't. I honestly thought about putting a bunch of tea candles down just to let the radiant heat do its thing. Now, I have done it in the past. Um, what were we doing? We built a snow fort. It was like an igloo. And we went to the dollar store and we bought ceramic uh, pots for planting flowers and stuff. And all you do is uh, the bottom of the pot has a hole drilled in it for probably leaching out any water, like too much water leaches it out into the bottom tray and then over, you know, your overflow drain. Um, all you do is you light your tea candle and what we did was we used the over, we basically inverted. So you had the plate on the bottom and then the pot on the top inverted like a teepee, if you will, like a tent. You put your candle on the bottom one, you light it, you put three, four candles in there, whatever you light it and you put the pot on upside down so that it's like a dome and you just let it sit there. And what happens is the ceramic of the pot gets super, super hot. Don't touch it because you'll burn yourself. It'll radiate heat. And we did that in a little igloo thing that we built, like a little snow fort igloo, dug a hole in the side of a hill and then we, we put a couple of those in there to melt the inside so that it would refreeze and solidify and kind of give it some structure. And it worked awesome. Like it was super warm in there. It, you couldn't cook on it or anything, but it, it generated the heat that we were looking for. So I thought about it. I was like, you know, that would be probably kind of cool to do something like that for this setup here. I got like little friggin' frosty balls on my friggin' line here. This is garbage. We only have one perch and lobster tails tonight. We only have one perch and lobster tails. No big deal. It's debating on swinging by the grocery store, maybe grabbing something else, but, uh, eh, I think we'll be okay. Cause I was gonna stay till seven, eight, but everybody I talked to says the night bite sucks on calendar. I figured we'll, uh, give her a rip here, play around for a bit. And like I say, if we do catch another fish, then cool. And if we don't catch another fish, at least we didn't get skunked. So that's the way I see it. One fish, we didn't get skunked. You know, I'm not the greatest angler. You know, uh, you watch people out there like fishing with flare or uh, ace, ace videos, you know, Lojo and Yak Pack. <laughs> Actually, Yak Pack, I love watching that guy's video. Goes. That guy's just freaking hilarious. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to ponds that they know, they know what's there. They know the fish, how they react and stuff. So, They'll like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go here to Walmart. We're gonna do the lose challenge where all you can buy is like a lose rod and reel. Um, or here's $25 to buy tackle. We're gonna buy the weirdest, whatever the case may be. They do some stupid challenge that's just ridiculous. Like the Barbie challenge where you buy Barbie, the uh, little kids fishing poles, you know, those Barbie spin casters. And they go out and they catch fish on them. And you know, they catch like one or two fish and then the freaking thing explodes because they're just garbage. They're meant for popping pan fish, not freaking three pound bass. But they'll uh, go out there and they'll they'll do stuff like that. But they know the pond. They know what's in there because it's a closed pond. It's not, you can't keep the fish. You literally catch them, send them back, catch them, send them back. You know, I'd love a thing like that in North Bay where you don't keep them. But you can go fish there just to, just to kill time. Catch a fish, send it back. Catch a fish, send it back. Like, we got a lot of lakes here. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is... I, I just, There's bodies of water that I haven't even seen yet. And I know they're there. Like, Lake Talon, I know is, is there. It's a good one. Uh, there's Pimsy Lake, which apparently is fantastic for brook trout. Um, not to mention, like, last year when Sarah and I went to Mattawa... There was all those lakes, like uh, the river, the Matawa River, and the power dam that we were fishing at. She caught that big bass, but friggin' dummy was trying to help her net. I couldn't help her net, I was too far away. And the guy that was trying to help her net it was obviously his first time ever holding anything in his hands, because instead of actually getting the net underneath the fish, he hit the fish three times and set it free. Like, what are you doing? But yeah, she uh, she caught it, she had a night, that, that was a big, that was like a, way bigger than any bass I caught. That's for sure. All my bass, I got, you know what I got to buy this year, guys? I got to buy a friggin' scale. I got to weigh these fish, like, especially the next summer when we start catching sheephead and they're pulling drag, I need to know just how much dead weight that guy was throwing at me. Because sheephead are the funniest fish ever. They'll do the head shake, but when they realize, like, it's game over and they're out of gas, they just literally go dead. They just go limp and go, yeah, haul this up. Now you're hauling up a dead, flat fish. <laughs> it's not dead, it just... It quits, and <laughs> it's funny. It's funny to watch them do that, and they get this dopey look on their face. But I'd like to know how much they weigh, because even when you get them out of the water, you like you grab them by however you can. You can grab them by the mouth like a bass, or you can grab them by the like a, the, underneath the gill, the gill plate. Don't grab them by the gills; that's just not cool, especially if you're not going to keep it, because that'll kill it. But you can grab them by the gill plate and 
But I remember the one that I caught last year, uh, Big Chungus, when he pulled drag, and I ended up tightening up my drag a bit there, and he, he was real, I thought my ugly stick was going to snap, like he was really putting the torque to her. And that's the that's the one when we <laughs> Sarah caught the sucker, and um, all I had was my little blue cooler, so the sucker's in the cooler, and <laughs> I threw <laughs> I threw the sheep's head on top of the sucker and just compressed it because Big Chungus just completely annihilated that poor little sucker fish. Oh, it was so funny. Um, hopefully I remember. I'll put the picture up in case you missed that video of what it looked like. The poor sucker fish, like you can't even see him. It's just this big stupid face of a drum staring at you. A lot of people think it's weird that I like the taste of drum fish, but honestly, it's not that bad. Even the sucker was good. I just really, really, really friggin' wish I would have watched Carps and Catfish's video on how to clean a carp, because a sucker cleans exactly like a carp. If you follow his guidelines on how to clean a carp with a sucker, you'll get rid of all those Y bones, and it'll be just amazing. Like even um, Joe Robinette on his 10 days alone in the wild, one of the first fish he caught was a sucker and he was humming and hawing about it and then he cleaned it and he ate it and his only complaint was exactly what I complained about like lots of meat but the meat was mushy it wasn't stiff meat like sheep head it was mushy meat and the Y bones that's because I'm pretty pretty friggin sure that sucker fish fall in the carp family I may be wrong on that so if I am correct me now or forever hold your peace whatever you choose. Yeah, I'm a little butter here. Kind of hoping to catch another guy. Still plenty of time though. It's only, what, 4.33? Man, this friggin' watch of mine is near dead. We got 13% life left. Gonna need to charge you up. The other day when I turned it on workout mode for the 12 hours and just let her do her thing, we burnt uh, 5,700 calories that day. I was in aggressive scan mode. The only difference between aggressive scan and regular scan is it'll always monitor your heartbeat, so it really puts a beating on the battery that uh, four day battery life will really become a two day maybe 36 hours tops i did it once before where i left it on workout mode for uh, 24 hours fully charged it took it off the charger at like 11 a.m put it on workout mode and just left it there till 11 a.m the next day and the watch literally had like 40 percent battery life left just beat the living tits out of the poor battery so it's not something you want to do very often and it's also the same reason why this watch has the same battery as the apple watch but the apple watch has less battery life because the apple watch works different should have messaged my buddy ryan and seen what he was up to today he would have wanted to come out and give her a dangle yeah, I don't know, I kind of like this little little thing. It's going to take some work to figure out how to heat it and use it for a single man run and gun. But all in all, I think this is pretty badass. And there goes another quad. And that window's frosted over. I don't know where he's going. Looks like he's going towards the docks. I don't know, I'd, I'd buy a quad over, uh, over a sled any day for doing what I'm doing out here. Especially with a setup like this, even with the big shanty, I could put the tow bar right on the sleigh and just drive out to... Cause if you go further out that way there it gets even deeper it gets about 50 feet deep so and at 50 feet friggin deep boys jeez you're gonna find some monsters down there that's what i was thinking about doing tomorrow is if we come back out which we probably will <sighs> i'm gonna have to see if deep water how the parking is at that creek i know they apparently they blocked off all the parking at tillicum bay road and uh, the other road so now you gotta park on the ice but the last time i went if you guys remember, the ice gave away <laughs> at the entrance, and I'd hate to be that guy who is out there dangling, and I want to come home now, and I can't because the road's broken. I wonder if that little white stool I have at home would work. If I put that down, put this underneath it, put the heater on top of it, I think tomorrow it's going to be actually warmer out. Like right now, it's minus, probably minus 15 sun's going down so shit's gonna get colder yeah it's minus 13 right now it's gonna drop down feels like minus 18 and it's gonna drop down to 19 tonight so uh tomorrow's gonna be only minus nine so we'll be fine tomorrow just trying to figure out where i want to go dangle i love nas saying but at the same time i don't <laughs> i could check out some of the other lakes but i really should you know 
<laughs> I really should figure out the lakes that I come to a lot. Like figure out the strat on this one. I should talk to my buddy Jean and see what the fishing's like over at his house. <laughs> Just go out there and drop my shit off and rip a hole in the ice and give her a hardcore dangle. There was a guy on Facebook Marketplace. He was selling a fishing camera. I thought about it, but then I looked into it and realized it didn't have record. And it's one of those things where if I'm going to get a fishing camera, I kind of want it to record. Because I think that extra footage would make the videos a little bit more interesting to watch. Like, get the, get the camera down there and showing off what's going on underwater. And if you see my lure and you see the fish snap it, I think that'd be kind of cool to watch. Get a lot more information on strikes and what's going on under the friggin' ice. Still ain't just for like summer fishing though. Like winter fishing, this is okay and stuff. You get to get out of the water without having a boat, so that's kind of cool, I guess. It's about the only bonus I can think to it. Other than that, you freeze your tits off and it's a long ass walk there and back. <laughs> it's one of those, it's one of those, is, is, it, is it really worth it? And I don't know, it gives me something to look forward to on the weekends, that's for sure. Because uh, to be fair, I used to hate winter, like all the time, the moment I became an adult. I never did anything. I just sat in my house and played video games all winter. Never really did anything in the summer either. Except when we uh, got the mini bikes, then we were doing that in the summer. And we never really did anything uh, crazy. Like the mini bikes and the lawnmowers is all that really happened, you know? And then I started going, when I started going to blokes and hanging out there. And that's another reason why COVID needs to frig off is because it'd be nice on a weekend, you know, maybe uh, if Sarah's around to say, hey, uh, would you be able to look after Oreo for a weekend and take a rip down to London and go visit the boys? Because uh, I know lots has, has changed. Lots has changed in, in the five years since, almost six years since I've been down there. Uh, bloke no longer has the Chevy, he now has a Ford, and Bobby doesn't even live in friggin' London anymore. He moved out to, I think, Godrich, or he's gone now. He's somewhere else, and Tyler has a kid. Like, that's crazy. Things have changed big time. Pretty sure Rickham's still drinking friggin' James Ruddy, getting shit-faced every night, so I guess that never changed. I don't know, I haven't watched Rickham's videos in forever. I'm pretty sure uh, I unsubscribed because it was literally just live show after live show of him and a bunch of people just getting drunk and screaming. <laughs> I was like, this is stupid, what am I doing with my life? I don't know, when I quit drinking, I lost interest in the whole party scene. I like doing this, this is fun. Even though you're probably watching it going, how can that be fun? It's, it's fun, you come out, you catch fish. When you catch fish, it's fun, because you get to see their stupid little faces. Like Derpy in the sled over there, his stupid little face, it's cute. Kind of want to get an aquarium now, just not to fish it or anything. <laughs> but just to have fish in the room with me, just to hang out. Give them stupid names, feed them. Maybe that'll be my next pet. We'll get some fish. Thought about doing like all the YouTubers do, catching a fish, like get your sunfish or something and then keep it as a pet, or... I was like, ah, you know what, I'll just <laughs> get an aquarium and just get some pet fish and... Put them on my white desk in the computer room and then I can just stare at them. Watch them do fish things. Give them neat names. Nothing crazy, like I'm not gonna do like a cichlid tank or anything like that. Like holy shit. My buddy Max has a cichlid tank and the upkeep on it's just stupid. And then my other buddy, he's got a shark tank. Well, he's got imperial sharks in there. They're pretty cool, but once again, salt water, so pain in the ass. He used to go to Walmart and buy like uh, the big fat stupid golden goldfish. And then he'd bring them home and he'd throw one in the tank and you'd just watch the shark just destroy that fish. Like, and it was such a strategic strike. It was amazing to watch. <laughs> what the big string of friggin' ice on the line here. This is like, it was like a necklace almost. Like a diamond necklace. I'm probably going to use this setup again tomorrow. Kind of like it. I want to give it a good run for the weekend before I make the decision on whether or not I'm going to buy it or not. If I don't buy it, it's $100 towards a GoPro. If I do buy it, then I got a single man running gun. Like I say, the only thing that sucks about the big tent is the drying because you, because it does this all the time because of how cold the ground is. Maybe I'm not using it right. I don't know. But basically the air bleeds into the windows because the windows on that thing are shit. Uh, the window, the, this freezes up and it gets wet and then it freezes and there's problems. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to bring this thing in the house tonight and let it thaw out and clear off so that I can come back out tomorrow and do it again. Tomorrow night I can't be out long because I gotta work Monday. One thing I can tell you right now is it friggin' smells like minnows in here. Like big time fish. So I'm thinking, yeah, tomorrow will be a better day because when it started off there it was warm and then as the temperature started slowly dropping, it seemed like things were getting weaker. 
I don't know what the heck that is on my scope that's surfacing. Let's go see if we can chase it. Maybe it's one of those herrings. Or maybe it's somebody's piss. That's what happens when you, when you piss underwater. <laughs> Sonar's getting messed up. Oh, my hands are freezing. Jesus, Murphy. Guys, we might have to shut it down. We need to do it, but we're gonna have to do it. Yup. Let's pack it in. I know, I said I was gonna stay late, but freak sakes. That temperature just sunk. Let's start packing up. Look at behind me, all the condensation off my body, friggin' Isn't that awesome. This tent is definitely gonna have to come in the house. That much is a given. Don't know how I'm gonna run these straps. It is what it is. All right, we got everything. <laughs> Slides stuck to the ground. Oh, shit. Try, try again. There we go. All right, it's laying a course for home. Everything's in here, except for the shelter, because that's in the house thawing out. One thing I gotta do is lock the truck, grab this, grab Jimothy, he's frozen stiff. <laughs> How much you want to bet I put him in the sink, thaw him out, and he comes back to life. I'm telling you guys, zombie fish, it's a thing. Can't kill these damn things. We're sure gonna cook them. Sure gonna cook them. All right. Hey, Oreo, look. What's that? All right, let's go throw Jimothy here. Right straight into the sink. Move! For a little dog, he makes a better door than a window, that's for sure. Let him fall out. He'll start flipping flapping. All right, I'm gonna get undressed and uh, then we'll get cooking. All right, you guys, we're home. I took off Jimothy's head. I won't show you that, it's pretty gross. Um, 
had to thaw him out a bit because holy crap this guy was frozen and he still is so I need to thaw him out I accidentally knocked off one of his fins whoops I'm doing the old hot water method in the sink I'm gonna bleed him out too took his gills off his head <laughs> got rid of it we're gonna gut him scale him bake him I only had one beer on the ice so I've just been having beers since I got home pretty good shit <laughs> Don't you just love those like recipes where all you wanna do, all I wanna do is figure out how to steam in an instant pot some lobster tails. And literally you go to the site and they tell you a whole backstory. Like there's a whole prologue backstory. It's like a saga you gotta get through just to get to the, okay, how long did you put it in for? Just, I know there's a steam button. Prep time 10 minutes, cook time one minute, time to pressure cooker to come to pressure 15 minutes, 10 seconds. Total cook time, okay. Cut the top of the lobster tail shell. Don't worry about hitting the meat too much as it'll create a butterfly appearance. Okay, we'll let Jimothy thaw out some more here and I guess we're gonna play with some lobster. You guys ready for me to mess this up? Cause I am. All right, well I descaled the perch, processed them, all the friggin' meat is only left, so bones in there too, so you gotta be careful when you're eating it, but uh, that's how you get the most meat out of your perch. Probably gonna pan fry them, but as for these, I don't know. This is what it says to do. Let's go steam, five minutes, pressure level low. Make sure she'll build up pressure and hold, and let's see what happens. Otherwise, I'm ordering a pizza. All right, so I butterflied it. Um, probably should have butterflied it a little better, but we're gonna see how this turns out. Let it cook, we'll flip it, do the sides, make sure it's cooked all the way through. And we'll have fish and lobster. Should be freaking awesome. All right, guys, this perch. That looks pretty damn good. But these things here gotta finish and then you gotta leave them sitting there and let them come to uh, whatever. So we're gonna let that do its thing. I'm gonna go and enjoy my perch right now. That moment when you think you don't have that much footage but it turns out you have that much footage. Holy crap. Anyway guys, I saw like Ace do this and a couple other people do this. Uh, Greg Ovens was one of them. And apparently it makes the fish really good so let's give it a try. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. The skin is like crispy. The fins are friggin' delicious. Like the fins, like little potato chips. Okay, there were a few scales that kind of made it past, but uh, all in all, that's a good perch. I wish I got more of them. Could really go for a lot more of them. Then I would've just filleted them and fried them the same way. All right, I'm gonna eat my fish and then we're gonna go check on that lobster. You end up with remains, so you can almost see like there's a spine right there. Yup. Okay, that looks right, I think. Right, it turns red. Okay, cool. All right, let's get these little assholes on a plate. All right, let's see if this actually worked out. Got the lobster tails cooked, some garlic, sort of butter. Let's do it. Now, once again, not 100% sure I cooked it right, but uh, we'll see if we can eat raw anyway, so hopefully lobsters are the same. I'm like looking all over for a friggin' tripod, and then I remembered I bought one, this uh, pistol grip thing. So let's go ahead and get you guys set up in tripod mode, if I can figure this shit out. Wing up. Wing up and bend this back and stable. Everything's in my freaking. I, I just. Why? Why does everything gotta be in my way? Why can't everything just freak off? Alright. We're good? Okay, we're good. Fish was fantastic. I love perch. Now, I don't know how we're supposed to eat these stupid things. Kind of stab at it. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, cut it down the middle of the top and she'll butterfly open after you're done steaming it for two minutes. I steamed it for five, so I don't know what the hell's going on here. Anyway, I exposed some meat. Look, you can tell. I'm gonna use my fork to attempt to extract said meat. Let me swear at it. Okay, <laughs> got some meat. Tastes pretty good on its own. Is it bad that I like the perch better? Maybe I didn't prepare this right or something, but lobster's okay. Uh, this is why I can't go to classy restaurants. Anyway guys, I'm gonna figure out this lobster and uh, talk to you guys in a bit. Holy crap guys, it's friggin' 11.30 and I'm still friggin' editing. I'm like maybe a third of the way through all the footage and yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to bed. I'm sitting here and I'm doing like the one eye open, one eye closed. You know what I'm talking about? Campers, be sniffing. Seriously, what are you sniffing? What are you doing? Such a weirdo. Anyway, I'm gonna let Stupid out because, uh, well, he probably needs to go out. And then I'm gonna get to bed because I'm freaking cooked. This thing's all dried off, so we'll have to uh, reassemble that. So I'm gonna be editing that throughout the week. I'll get that 
video up as soon as possible, I guess. I don't know. You guys are watching this right now, don't even know why I'm talking about it. Anyway, something cool that I just noticed about this high tech is uh, when you close it all up, you can actually Velcro, but it's not closed up right because there's probably still shit bunching up somewhere and causing it to act a fool. It's still wet anyway, so we'll let the uh, moisture dry off. I don't know, I kind of like this. This actually worked out pretty damn good for what it is. Like, I looked them up online and they sell brand new for like 200 bucks. If he's gonna let me have it used for 100, that's a pretty good deal for a simple little one man. And with the clam gone, all I have is the big fray bill tent and... Oh my god, I don't know what the hell, man. I've been doing that all night. Ever since I ate that lobster and fish, just been farting up a storm. Anyway, I'm gonna disconnect this stupid, right? Who's just stupid? Uh, I'm not sure where we're gonna head tomorrow. We'll try a different lake or the same lake or what, but we'll figure that out then. Anyway, people, on that note, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, movie, whatever you want to call it, because holy crap, she was a long one. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, guys, remember, live to win, never give in. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.